This video is powered by Goalie Guild Gaming. G3 has partnered with us to make these videos possible and are dedicated to supporting esports goalies around the world. Make sure you check them out at goalieguildgaming.com. In this video, I've collected tips from the best ESHL players in the world at their position. Each one of these players has played on top teams and competed against the best players and teams for many, many years. These players are constantly succeeding at the highest level of ESHL esports events like Caps Gaming, the Sharks Pacific Cup, and CBJ, and a ton of the other most recent events. For my European viewers, in our last video, you guys requested that I get the best European players to join in as well. And I did my best for you. I asked the top six EU players if they would want to be featured or share any advice. And they either didn't respond or said they did not want to give any advice. So don't hold it against them. But it would have been great to have international representation in these videos. But I'm open to having these guys on a later video if they change their minds. This is not a place to argue whether or not Europeans are better than North Americans. There's no international competition. I'm very grateful for the people in this video. Um, they all understand the importance of growing your player base so you can raise your own skill ceiling. The best teams, the best players in the world can't get better by only competing with the same two teams over and over again, which is why we've seen so much fast growth in the North American scene. There's about eight to 10 elite level teams that all have a chance to win tournaments. And that number is growing with every single tournament released. I know in Europe, Kinu's doing some great things on his production, uh, breaking down elite level plays on stream. The ice bang up the right side, lots of room to generate an offensive opportunity. They have to communicate. If somebody's going to press up there to make that play on the middle of the ice, another person needs to come in behind to counter and make up that gap. They also have some like minor league or farm team system going on as well. I think that's going to benefit them greatly. So with that being said, let's get right into the tips. Our first skater giving advice is Guan, and he's the left defenseman on Vertigo. He's not only one of the top defensemen in this game, he is one of the best overall players altogether in the game. The core group of players on Vertigo have been around for a very long time, and they've had success for as long as they've existed. This is a powerhouse team that everyone's terrified to play against. Uh, he uses a puck moving D-man at six foot one, 170 pounds, and you can see his traits and his specialties there. He's got some great advice. And his first tip is to use all your teammates and all of the open space on the ice that you can. Something as simple as a D to D pass in your D zone will take some pressure off of you and your forwards and open up room to make for an easier breakout. A clean breakout makes for easier zone entries, which are very, very difficult at the next level because the North American traps are basically impenetrable. It's gotten to a point where you can't break that trap at the blue line uh, without some serious puck work or a dump. Um, and the best teams in this game will not let it get broken. So a clean breakout always makes it easier. His second tip, to get better at breaking the puck out, keep your opponent guessing which way you'll go on the ice and what you'll do with the puck. Mix in right stick moves and constantly change directions with the left stick to mask which direction you're gonna go. Protecting the puck with A on Xbox or X on PS4 is always an option, but just be careful because it slows you down. At the highest level, the game moves very fast and the offensive team will pressure you when you start to slow down, so be careful. On zone entries and neutral zone play, you can use these tactics the left stick and the right stick movement to become a bit of a decoy. If your opponent sees you as a threat, you can force them to collapse on you once you start to mess around with the puck, which will leave one of your teammates open. Look for a far side winger, a cutting center, or your D-man behind you trailing you, and you should have an easier entry. His third tip, as a defenseman, you have the job of defending a lot of high talent wingers. Guan has to defend these types of players every single game, especially when he gets to playoffs, he's defending the best wingers in the country. Okay, He suggests you pay attention to their play style and learn the tendencies early on in the game. You can do that over the course of multiple games and even months at the highest level or just even throughout the course of the first period if you've never faced a team before. It'll help maintain proper gap and proper spacing between you and the winger, allowing you to cut them off at the appropriate time for a turnover. 
Guan says that he tends not to bump or hit as much as other top defensemen. Instead, he tries to outweigh his opponent and time his defensive stick to strip him off the puck. As a D-man, instead of constantly backskating and facing your opponent all of the time, which is what, what a lot of us tend to do on defense as newer defensemen, once they enter the zone, turn around and skate with them. Backskating can get you burned by a talented winger who has a lot of speed or a lot of moves. Uh, so try to time when you turn around so that you don't get burned and you can glide and match their speed, Okay, which is important. You have to be able to turn around, glide, match their speed, and maintain a proper gap. His fourth tip, learn to be crafty. Guan, I can tell you, is one of the most unpredictable players with the puck. You wouldn't think to use a lot of dekes, right stick moves, or left trigger turns on defense, but they will help you create open ice for you and your teammates. Being able to get yourself out of trouble on defense will go a long way and help prevent turnovers and goals. At the next level, every single skater at every position knows how to move well in this game. There aren't a lot of flat-footed players, even on defense. They have to know how to get themselves out of trouble. And Guan says that obviously when you're first learning to do this, that can, this can lead to turnovers, um, especially when you overdo it or pick the wrong time to, do, to perform a deke. Um, but you do have to learn when the right time is to take risks because that's part of winning games. With more practice, the risks are going to start to pay off and you're going to get a feel for the right time to use them. Just don't be afraid to make judgment calls. You know, become the fourth forward to take pressures off of your forwards in the O zone or in the neutral zone. Look for opportunities to jump up on a zone entry, drive the net from the point, or draw the defense into the slot when you're carrying the puck from the point to open up your wingers for a one-timer. Just be smart. Don't do it too often. Remain unpredictable uh, because otherwise, if you're doing it too much or becoming predictable, you're going to create odd man rushes and frustrate your teammates. Next up is jclaws33, the center on Entourage, and you can follow him on Twitch at jclaws33 and on Twitter, NHL jclaws33. jclaws has been a player that I've watched grow from being a one versus one player on PS4 to being an elite ESHL player on PS4. And then when we transitioned over to Xbox, he did not skip a stride. This guy stayed at the top of his game and has won at every single level he has played at, which is a very underrated stat, I think. There's lots of good high talent players, but a lot of them don't win. And Jay Claus is a winner. I see his build here. He didn't give a specific build because he likes to switch it up. All right, he switches between weights and different traits and different types of builds, but he just typically plays at six foot two. His first tip, the most important tip, and I'm going to side with him on this, is to be a good teammate. As the center, you control a lot of the play, and in turn, you control a lot of the vibes as well. Supporting your teammates, encouraging them, even if they're struggling, can go a long way. Especially if you consider yourself to be the best player in your personal group, the top guy on the team being a downer brings everyone else down. So try to be a positive presence. The second tip. The role of the center is to distribute your teammates across the ice. This applies to all positions, but at center, it's very, very important for you to do on offense. A lot of times he's looking to pass into open ice or space rather than right at someone. He'll look for teammates who have a speed advantage on their defender and lead them with a saucer pass into that open ice rather than forcing a regular pass to them. His third tip, in order to get a higher quality shot, Try to glide before you press up. At center, it's tough because a lot of times you're in crowded space in the middle of the ice, but even a short glide, even just a brief glide will add power and accuracy to your shot. Rushing shots is a recipe for missing the net or shooting a muffin. Tip number four, as a center, you should be offering support to your D-men in the left center or right center of the ice, depending on where the puck is. It allows your D-men to be aggressive and step up on the zone entry at the blue line. You can cover for them if they miss the hit or if someone else picks up the loose puck, all right? And as a center, you can guide puck carriers towards your D-men. You can lead them into your D-men uh, and, and line them up for an easy hit for your D-men or a takeaway. And also, you can allow your D-men to guide the puck carrier into the middle. 
and shut them down right at the blue line. Lastly, you need to be able to recognize when an opponent is cutting or streaking through the middle of the ice for breakaways and odd man rushes. And your job as a center is to stay in front of them and to stop them from, from getting those chances. Tip number five, uh, use left trigger or L2 to change directions quicker and create space for yourself. It's been nerfed in NHL 21, but by moving your left stick the opposite way you're turning with left trigger can propel you in a different direction and maintain some good speed. It's a good way to shake off opponents trying to poke or rush you. Tip number six, use a gaming monitor if you want to maximize your potential. Using a TV puts you at a disadvantage with response time. Obviously a one millisecond response time monitor will give you an edge. Tip number seven, support your D-man on the breakout. You should always be the closest passing option, especially if the team is floor checking. Don't fly the zone early or hunt for breakaways all the time, or else you're going to leave your D-man out to dry. Next up, we have Augie, the left D on BBB. And Augie's just recently landed on one of the top esports teams in the last few years here. Uh, he's been around for a while, but he took his time to grind his way to the top. He's one of those players who is an all-around, overall, well-rounded player. He's an elite skater, an elite puck mover, and he creates chaotic offense. I've played against this guy and he's extremely unpredictable and frustrating to play against when he's in the offensive zone. He runs a six foot, 174 puck moving D-man. Uh, his first tip, be aware of your center at all times in both the offensive zone and the defensive zone. On offense, you can decide when to be aggressive based on where the center is. If the center is higher in the slot, he can cover you easily uh, when you go to pinch in. Defensively, you can use your center as help um, to guide players into him and know when you can go into the corner or when you can be aggressive and to also help you read plays because sometimes your center is going to need to cover one guy in the slot and you're going to have to be able to cover the other guy. The second tip on defense, try to use different ways of defending two-on-ones, right? There are certain times where you're going to have to be aggressive on the puck carrier and other times you're going to have to be passive. And the way to figure out when to do that is just by mixing it up and reading the play and keeping your opponent guessing, all right? You can't just stick to one single way or else you're gonna get beat. He also suggests that you bait the puck carrier. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can throw a fake hit, which will cause him to either make a pass or a shot. You can pretend to be overly passive and outweigh him, and which will force him to cut towards the net and make a play himself. And then you can go in and take the puck away, all right? But the important part, is that you keep your opponents guessing and you mix it up on defense, especially on two-on-ones. Tip number three, he would recommend finding a top defenseman on a top team that represents the same type of gameplay that you want to play. All right, Everyone's play style is unique in their own way, but if you can find a top player that's similar to you and watch their scrims or streams or tournament games and pick up on small things such as what builds they use, the way they communicate with their teammates, or certain plays they, they execute, then it's gonna help you improve your game. Next up, we have Hendry, the left winger on Entourage. You can follow him at Hendry with an X and two Ys on Twitter, or at, at Hendry on Twitch uh, with just one X and one Y. He runs a five foot seven, 160 pound sniper, core balance two, bouncer one, and quick release specialty. Anyone who's seen Entourage play knows they're a high energy, high speed team. And a big reason for this is because of Hendry and his teammate Fisher. You can't go without mentioning Hendry without mentioning his teammate Fisher because these two have some of the best chemistry on forward that we've ever seen in this community. They're all about generating fast-paced offense and chaotic plays off of the rush and behind the net. And if you've ever been in a party with these guys, you know that it's a great time. They bring a lot of good energy and they have a lot of good time playing the game. So his first tip is just along those lines. Find a group that you enjoy playing with. If you ever want to take a step to the next level, it's important to find a core group of people with good attitudes that are willing to grind and get better and understand where they're weak and how to get better at, at improving those weaknesses. All right. It's important that you can stick together as a team to work out all the kinks that every single new team will face. It's not just going to come to you easily. You have to grind to work on your weaknesses as a team. And it's important that people can handle that. You need a good balance of players, players who can play support roles, players who can defend and make up for when the best players take risks. 
All right. And you even need to have good chemistry with your goalies, which I love this tip because there are certain teams as a goalie, you just can't play behind for whatever reason. You just don't mesh well with them. And people think it's a joke because goalies should be able to, you know, play behind anybody. But that's not the case. Some people are just better at saving different types of situations. And Hendry wants you to know that all six players on the ice need to have good chemistry. And it takes a lot of time to develop that. Tip number two, look for open ice in the offensive zone and continuously move and stay looking for that space. One thing you should be doing as a winger without the puck is constantly looking for those open spots and open ice to give your teammates a good passing option. Finding open ice in the slot and being able to create open ice in the slot is one of the best skills a winger can have in this game. You know, cutting towards the net and drawing defenders in, even forcing pucks towards the middle of the net and to the net is very effective and a very important skill to have this year. Tip number three, shoot the puck. In NHL 21, we've seen the most snipes of any recent game in memory. Um, Anytime you find yourself with an open shooting lane in the ozone, do not pass it up for a forced pass. Let it rip. Um, And his advice for getting high quality shots and scoring goals is reading the goalie when you're looking for a shot. A lot of goalies like to overplay short side, which leads to an easy far side snipe. There are also goalies who have a tendency to cover the one-timer option or cheat a little bit, which opens up short side. You just have to pay attention to the goalie, watch for their tendencies, and make sure you're hunting for those opportunities when you get the open ice to shoot. It's also easier to score goals when you find that open ice and that open shooting lane and you use the opposing D-men as a screen or even your own teammates as a screen. Because in this game, screen effect matters for goalies. And if anyone is blocking that line of slight even slightly, you're going to get a later reaction. So if you get a good shot off uh, and the goalie's screen, there's a really good chance you're going to score or the goalie's going to cough up a juicy rebound. And as much as Henry is a great offensive player he understands the value of good defense good defense leads to good offense so it's very important to back check fully and seeing a play through on defense to help your d-men out all right top teams capitalize on 75 percent of their scoring chances if you give them an odd man rush with no back checkers but if you back check hard and you have a good knack for reading the play and seeing a play develop you're going to be rewarded with rushes and counterattacks going the other way Tip number five, and again, I love this one. Don't take it too seriously. At the end of the day, it's a video game that we're all playing for fun and as a hobby. And the more enjoyment you get from playing, the more success you're going to have. If you find yourself constantly complaining about the game, you're going to drain all the fun for yourself and your teammates, and you're not going to find success. Next up is Tendi, the right wing for composure. Tendi is the elite offensive threat on that core group of composure players. His chemistry with Odie on the right side of the ice is unmatched. There is no other duo on the right side of the ice that has been as good as these two for the last 7-10 to 10 years. The NHL 21 meta has especially been good to Tendi, who has seemed to find the back of the net more than any other year. He's also provided us with two builds, which I think he'll explain here in his first tip. Find one to two builds that you're comfortable with that you can use depending on the group you're playing with or playing against. He uses a bigger puck moving D build on forward, remember, uh, when he's playing with a group that wants to play a bit more of a possession based game with slower controlled breakouts. He also has a smaller sniper build that he uses when he's playing with a group that wants to create fast chances in transition and fast breakouts. Tip number two from Tendi is pay attention to your stamina bar. This one's really important. I think everyone in this game needs to pay attention to their stamina bar. He says he sees a lot of streams of people who hustle too much and play most of the game with zero energy. He feels that when his stamina is not in the green, his player shooting, passing, skating, and pickups are all affected. And I can tell you as a game changer who has been in contact with the devs, that is true. When your stamina is drained, all of those things are affected negatively. When his stamina is low, he finds areas on the ice to either stand still or glide when he can to regain his energy. You can also call out to your D-men to hold on to the puck and wait in your own zone so that you can get that energy back. Again, I think that tip is extremely important 
and something you guys should really pay attention to. Tip number three, try to mix things up and not be predictable. We're gonna hear a lot of this tip, especially if you're using a small build and getting a lot of chances off of transitions, you gotta mix in shots, cross crease passes, or passing to the trailer behind you. Just make sure you're communicating with your team what you're looking to do, because if you're trying to be unpredictable, there's no chance that your teammates are gonna understand what you're doing. Next up, we have official Mark, the lefty on composure. He plays a six foot one, 170 pound puck moving D. And what I can say about Mark is that he, his strength lies in his ability to create offense. Obviously he has to be good at defense. At this level, being on a top two team like composure, he has to be good at defense. He has to be good at everything, but his strengths are in the offensive zone. I've seen this guy create chances from the point better than anyone else in the game. He uses every single player on the ice. He cuts towards the net to make the wingers collapse on him, the defense collapse on him, and he creates space for his teammates uh, to generate scoring opportunities. He also keeps it very, very light in the, in the group chat and in parties. He, he's very laid back, but he's serious when he needs to be. I love, I love playing with this guy. His first tip is to play on a camera where you can see as much of the ice as possible, so zone or overhead. Playing defense is no different than playing goalie. You have to be able to read the play so you can put yourself in position to stop it before it happens. If you're always reacting to the play, you're going to be in trouble, especially on defense. So using like a dynamic camera where there's a lot of camera movement going on, it can become disorienting. You can lose the puck in, cer in certain players because the camera cuts it off. So just make sure you're playing on a zone or overhead camera on defense. Tip number two, don't let opposing forwards between you and your net. It sounds pretty simple, but it's a very important point. If you're always in front of your opponent and they aren't behind you, they're not going to be able to get a high scoring uh, opportunity in front of the net. So you can pick off passes easier by stepping up. If you're in front of your, your opponent, you can also uh, stick check them or lay a hit sooner after they receive the puck. Tip number three, the puck moves faster than you can skate, so get it to your forwards as quick as you can, as much as you can. Next up, we have Odie, the right D for composure. And Odie's one of those players who's not only the best defenseman in the game, but he's one of the best overall players at 1v1 and at 6v6. He's had a lot of success in both scenes. He's the type of player who takes charge on the ice, he controls the team, and is a major factor and success behind composure. That core group of players on composure is just as highly feared as the core group of players on Vertigo. They're a team who's had success for many, many years. All right, and you can see Odie's built here. And make sure you follow Odie um, at ODNHL on Twitter and on Twitch. So Odie's first tip is to use saucer passes to your advantage in the defensive and neutral zone. In NHL 21, saucer passes give a speed boost to the player receiving the puck. Using a saucer pass up the boards not only gives the receiving player a boost, but makes it more difficult for the opponent to intercept it. Regular passes in the neutral zone sometimes slow down the receiving player, whereas saucer passes give you that extra boost. His second tip, take advantage of an overpowered puck moving D-man build. Almost every competitive D-man uses some sort of variation of the puck moving D build. The build is good at everything. The build has become so strong that even some forwards are using it for the strong passing and slap shot attributes. Tip number three, practice offensive zone face-off plays with your team. He thinks since poke checking is extremely overpowered in this game, scoring can become a little bit difficult, especially at the highest level. Being able to execute a good face-off play in the offensive zone gives your team another avenue to score. Next up, we have Call Me Jakku, the right winger on Vertigo. You can follow him on Twitter at Call Me Jakku with some underscores in there or on Twitch, Call Me Jakku with three O's and no spaces. This guy's grown to be one of the most fiercely respected offensive players in our community. This guy wasn't always the best, and he's going to tell you that, but this guy has certainly earned the respect of the community as one of the top right wingers in this game. Uh, if not the top right winger in the game. Before he gets into his tips, you can check out his build here. He runs a 5'11", 167 sniper, but he also wants to give you a bit of advice. Everyone has to start somewhere in the NHL community. He didn't always play on the best teams or with the best players from day one. 
As an up-and-coming player, you have to earn the respect from the top players or other people in the community. It just all depends on whether or not you're willing to grind to get there. It's just like real sports or anything else that is competitive. You have to work your way up the ladder. Okay, and his first tip, again, everyone has to start somewhere. So something as little as watching Twitch streams from the top ESHL players can go a long way. Finding the little things they do in specific situations and incorporating them into your own game can go a long way. Second tip, grind the game, learn the mechanics, things that work, things that don't work. The biggest thing people sleep on is spending the extra time by themselves, whether it's playing hut, practice mode, or even playing different positions in the SHL can translate into positive opportunities while playing under your main position with your team. The better understanding you have of the game mechanics, the way other people have to play certain positions, the better off you're gonna be. His third tip, and I love this one, don't be toxic. The more people you get along with, or the more people that enjoy playing with you will lead to more opportunities for yourself as you become better at the game, okay? There's nothing that's gonna shut you down faster than being toxic and talking a bunch of crap and having a huge ego when you're not one of the best players in the game and you're just gonna end up burning bridges for yourself. Tip number four, work on passing, especially in NHL 20, it's a pass heavy game. And what he means by that is that he feels passes are a little bit overpowered. You can, you can pass through opposing players, okay? Even some passes that maybe shouldn't go through opposing players sometimes do. So try to grind and learn the certain angles in spots so that you can constantly repeat those passes. His last tip is to get comfortable with a build that helps your own play style. Just because some top players use a certain build, it may not be a good build for you and how you like to play. Next up, we have Sitful, the center on BBB. And anyone who knows anything about Sitful knows that he has some of the quickest thumbs and the quickest twitch movements in the game. This guy grinds hut, he grinds ESHL, he plays nonstop, and because of that, he's one of the most unpredictable players to face on offense. If there's any weird glitch or stick movement or weird button combination that helps you generate offense or more speed, this guy is the guy who finds it first. He runs a six foot one, 191 pound two-way forward with core balance and crusher. His first tip is to use the quick release specialty. All right, not only does it help snapshots, any shot that's not a slap shot counts as a snapshot. So you get a boost of wristers that you can curl back as well. Tip number two, nothing is more important than team chemistry. Over his years of playing and playing competitive sixes, there is nothing more important than team chemistry. You can have all the individual skill in the world, all the elite button skill, but it's when you combine the two together that you become one of the top teams with a real chance to win tournaments. And his third tip, we've already brought it up, there's nothing more important than grinding the game. The more you play, the more time you put in, the better you're going to get. Playing against better players and better teams than yourself is the best way to develop because you're going to get exposed. There are always ways to get better, no matter how good you are. And there's always something to work on, so never settle. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, there's not many skater tips out there from elite skaters. So this is a very rare opportunity for you guys to learn from the best of the best, right? European guys, please, please talk to your top players and ask them to be a part of this video next time or in a video in the future. I want international representation. We're not going to argue who is better, all right, but they deserve some attention as well. And you guys deserve some advice from people from your own countries. So talk to them, get them on board. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not here to gain off of them. I just want to make everyone aware of the top players in this game and what they have to say so they can help you grow and develop so that we have more top players around the world. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.